gosh darn it, no, not again. I remember last time. I re- everyone raise your hand. Do we all remember last time? Oh, that's so sweet. I also awesome. have a very strange memory of someone singing happy birthday to me. It was very faint and distant. Oh, well, happy birthday, Valen. Is it your birthday? No. You're effectively manipulating time on a molecular level. What would happen if a device like that was supercharged by a nuclear reactor? It's going to create a time anomaly. We'll fix the panel for you. Anything to get us out of this. Uh, you want to make like robots and get, grab some Java? <laughs> okay, fine. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Foundlings, and welcome back to another episode of The Gate Chronicles. This is Chronicle 1, Chapter 61. We don't celebrate anymore. We're already yes, past. we do! Uh, Let's go! Let's go! Oh, yeah. Okay. That's awkward. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Emily. I'm your game master and host for this podcast series episode. The, the editor, producer, micromanager, magical, the Powerpuff Girl... Yeah, that, that, I, I think I got everything and just added a few. But anyway, I'm joined at my table by my two only players. Hi, I am the always enthusiastic Quentin Ott, who plays Charles Smoot, 57-year-old biology teacher, born and raised in upstate New York, excited to decapitate robots on this week's episode of The Gate Chronicles. In case you're wondering who the other guy is, that's me, Jade Namajo. I play Finnevere Avir. Uh, a roguish, bardish type. He's something. He's roguish and bardish. And He's I, roguish and bardish. And he bravely runs away. He bravely, he bravely runs, runs away. away. <laughs> uh, he very bravely ran away last episode. Actually, oh, no. Yeah. He did a really good job bravely running. Uh, and then but, uh, this episode, maybe more. Who maybe knows? Maybe more. And maybe even more. Find maybe we out. run away forever and right from now. our problems. What have I done to you? Find out right now on the Gate Chronicles. <laughs> Get in the comments. Get in the comments. If you enjoy our silly antics, make sure to trap your neighborhood uh, homeless person in the car with you and play this podcast for them. Share it with anyone and everyone you know, for it helps us get found and for more people to experience how crazy we are. So maybe we can get the mental help we deserve. Yeah, and take them out for a cheeseburger while they're at it. Yeah, oh. on top of that. Yeah, Burger cheeseburger. King? Yeah. Five guys? What kind of cheeseburger? Baco Tell. Baco is not a Ooh. cheeseburger. I Get almost went with it. Get in the comments. Let's go. So, let's get started. All right. So, gentlemen, I don't know if you remember, but. Oh, how could I forget? Let's do the time warp again. It was basically no, the entire last episode. Yes. Um, and so, you managed to somehow stop this anomaly from occurring. What? There's, there's no somehow. We stopped it by picking up the dumbbell that was on the floor. I mean, that was one of the ways. I was. I literally just had written down, there are many ways to stop this. And that's it. That's all I had. That was the only guiding light I had was that one sentence. <laughs> that, so. There were, in fact, many ways. Stand-up routine would have worked. Yeah, if we just got to perform a comedy show. Yeah, huh. I wonder. My poor, oh, I got to pull that up. Hold on. This is more important. This is more important than the actual recap. I need to find robot jokes about love now. Chat GPT. <laughs> okay. So, yes, you somehow managed to stop this anomaly from occurring and have now returned to the present. You reunited with Kelsey, but not before, uh, of course, your first run in with one of these corrupted androids and now we are back on floor one surrounded by a room of androids against the wall but four of them seem to have now woken up and are approaching towards you in a very aggressive manner so gentlemen th i think this is the perfect way to do this we're going to uh, roll for our initiative what was charles smooth's initiative 
Uh, 21 for Charles Smoot. What was Finnevere's initiative? 29. Let's go. Let us go. So, um, gentlemen, Benavir, you are first up in this turn order. You see that there are four of these androids slowly creeping towards you, their bodies dragging in very strange ways. One of them, you can see its arm is almost half off of its body. The other one, its head is almost completely inverted. This is a very disturbing scene for you. Is the room clean, as in is there uh, debris around? Oh, there is debris everywhere. This is a ruin. You are in the ruins of this once beautiful laboratory. There are glass shards everywhere, rusted metal hanging from the walls. What I'd like to do is use teleconnect projectile to, like, launch a dilapidated arm that is just hanging around. Sure. To smack one of these guys. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Finvir, would you like to do the thing? Oh, do the thing. The thing! Finnevere uses telekinetic projectile. To do the thing. The thing. Oh, okay, Finnevere, uh, what happened? What happened? You tell me what happened, Finnevere. Uh, let's see. And you tell me what that roll was. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say, all right, he'll go, take this. He'll uh, swiftly move his arm from left to right in a jerk motion to have one of the arms laying on the ground just like fly over and slap one of the other b- robots. But what he didn't realize was that was actually his bag of marbles. <laughs> the whole thing just flies out and misses. So, Finnevere has he changed lost his marbles. the terrain. Oh gosh, no, I need to <laughs> real fly to walk through that. <laughs> um, so, Finnevere, having thrown a bag of marbles on accident as he telekinetically projectiled with this amazing crit fail, you fling out these marbles and you hear as they hit across the floor, bouncing, but you see as they're spread out in front of you guys, and they have created some difficult terrain for both you and these androids. So it's not all bad. It's just unfortunate. Those things are not easy to replace. Dang it! How that many was actions? one. Uh, that was two actions. Okay, so you have one left to do as you please. He will raise his shield. <laughs> good plan. Good plan. Uh, that's the end of Finn's turn. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Charles Smoot, from a distance, you see as one of these androids raises up its arm, it seems to flick out a finger at you as an electric ray seems to shoot out. What is your AC? 23. So, uh, Charles Smoot. Remember, it crit, crits 10 or higher. So, Charles Smoot. I don't like the tone. What? What? I don't like We're the fine. Tone. Everything is fine. You're giving me an, a look. So, Charles Smoot, let's say if it were to crit. Mm, yeah, if it were to get a 33. If it were to naturally crit. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, that's powerful. <laughs> so, Charles Smoot, you feel as this ray shoots directly through your right shoulder, and it actually passes through and hits to the ground behind you. You oh. feel as you are going to take a lot of 14 damage. 14 fire damage. Ah! God Darn it, Finnevere! I can't hit it now, and they have ranged attacks! So, you see as this android begins to walk forward, however, I am going to be rolling to see if it can stay upright in this environment. And you see as this android meticulously steps around every single one of these bearings that are on the floor, and it approaches up close to Charles Smoot entering into his range. Oh, come on. Come at me. You hear as it kind of screeches in its head, this frightening jerk. Uh, Kelsey is currently next to Valen, which is behind Charles Smoot. So Charles Smoot is the big, the, the body in the front. As he should be. Okay, Charles Smoot. Yes, me. You feel as this... No, I'm fine. As, as Kelsey's hand touches up against oh. your back and you are healed for 29 hit points. Uh, well, I'm, I'm over full. You also feel as the wound on your shoulder closes up. Oh, 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 oh that's, that's kind of nice. I got you, Mr. Smooth. We're fine, I think. Thank you, Kelsey. Yep, yep. And she nice one. is going to stay right where she is, behind you. But she draws her dagger. Uh, you see as Valen summons his Thane dagger, and he is going to move up to the android that is next to you, Charles Smoot, and he is attempting to strike at it. 
The term Havathi, I, I really wish... Havathi! Havathi was like a very common thing because it would make it so much easier. All right. You see as Valen's rapier pierces directly into the underarm of this android and you see as a frost seems to creep out from his blade. And it looks like this uh, android has taken a good bit of damage. Is it the one that's directly in front of me that hit me with the laser blast? I need to know who I'm seeking revenge on. Oh, the one that is in front of you is the one that blasted you. Perfect. Okay. And it is now Charles Smooth's turn. And in classic Smooth fashion, I would like to rage. All right, Charles Smoot, you enter into your rage. One action rage. Back in my day, it was free. I know, back in the good old days. Charles Smoot flying into a rage as this robot just laser blasted him in the shoulder, pulls out his great sword, wielding it with two hands, and cleaves down the front of it. You hear as it screeches angrily. Now this is going to be a lot of blasting, I feel no, like. No more blast. Okay. Um, so, Finnevir, you see as one of the androids, it approaches towards you and it is going to reach you with its movement and attempt to hit you. Is that all right, Finnevir? But at first, also I need dodging to roll, to his, acrobatics roll his acrobatics. You're right. Robots notorious for their acrobatics. Yeah, you see as this one is definitely stepping around Gosh. these. It's actually like making a a dash at you, and it's like running. Too powerful. And it is going to attempt to strike you with its jagged taloned hand. Oh gosh. Is it also a three-fingered hand out of curiosity? Yes. All right. What is your AC? Uh, My AC is a comfortable 22. You, seeing this creature run at you, it, it tries to slash at you, but you manage to sidestep it and you hear as its fingers crash into the ground next to you, denting the floor. Ha! Such grip strength. <laughs> and as it removes its hand, you do see that there are holes where its fingers were. Such grip strength, indeed. Uh, Charles Smoot. Hey, that's me. You are once again being targeted by an electric ray from one of these Of course androids. I am. You now see this ray being shot at you, and you see this flash of light come at you, and you just turn just so slightly, and it flies past you, hitting into the wall, and you see as there is a burst of sparks as it crashes into another android that was not currently functioning. It falls over onto the ground. You see a giant hole in its chest. You see as another one of these androids or as I call them, the corrupted caretakers. Another corrupted caretaker charges forward and it stumbles <laughs> on the marbles? marbles and falls prone. Let's go! Ah, yes, meant to do that. <laughs> no, no, you don't get to play this off like this was intentional. <laughs> nice! I mean, it did help. Vinavir, we're back up to the top of the round. It is your turn. All right, I like these things being prone. Uh, Finn is going to go for a trip against the one that's in front of him. Okay. That would be this one, this one right here. Yep. I attempt an athletics check against the target's reflex DC. You got this. How goes your athletics? Pretty good. That's your acrobatics. What? That's your acrobatics. Uh, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I guess it's not great. It, I'm still going to do it's it. It's mediocre. I'm it's, still going to do it. It's yeah, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good, good roll. Good yeah, roll. Yeah, no, that's definitely... um. Uh, uh, success. So, Finnevere, uh, if it tell? was a critical success, it also does damage. Um, I do not believe that would be a critical success in this circumstance. Okay, we'll still take it. So, Finnevere, tell me how this uh, this occurs. Oh yeah, this thing is standing in front of him with his big medicine claw, and he'll just hook his right leg behind its legs and just push him backwards onto the the bearings. You see, as it slips and stumbles and becomes prone. Then we'll use the last two actions remaining to, like, scoop one of the ball bearings sideways, like, aiming for its head. Okay. Please roll to hit with that telekinetic projectile. All right. Is probably somewhat effective. It is effective. Quite effective, in fact. Nine damage. You can see that this one is, I guess the term is bloodied. Mm. Oh, dang. They, m m they might not have been at full HP because they're kind of already like somewhat damaged. No, it's bloodied. Like, bloodied half. is half. Okay, yeah. Generally speaking, uh, bloodied is a vague term that could be. This used. one is. Wait, you're right. You can see that it is oiled. Oh, it's oh. oiled. It's oily. Oh, back to the Surgis leeches. 
Yeah, they don't have blood. They got oil. Black oil. Charles Smoot, the android that is in front of you, <gasps> takes both of its arms and it attempts to slash in front of it itself oh. to hit you with like this strange cross attack. Oh, it wants to give its Uncle Smoot a hug. You're you're raging. You can't even word. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, Charles, when we get to your turn, I need you to roll a will save. Oh, no. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Watch out. You're behind me. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's like diagonal to you. He's, uh, he's pretty close. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Right. We, we, we make up the front line. I don't see you guys know, but what happens if your front line turns? Okay. Um, so. No, don't do that thing. <laughs> don't do that thing. So this first attack does miss. It's not a catastrophic, but it is a critical miss. It is going to attempt to hit you again. As it misses the first time, you can see that it's though lost some of its footing and. At this point, on the second attack, it does fall. Oh, poor baby. Charles Smoot just laughs at this thing, which is helplessly swinging at it. Yeah, they don't seem to be doing so great, guys. That's good for us. Finnevir, you hear as Kelsey kind of shouts towards you, uh, Mr. Finnevir, you should really duck next time. You're going to get a plus one bonus to your attack rolls, damage rolls, and saves for your next round. For your oh, next. dang. Just remember to duck next time. You get a word of warning. Well, Finn's going to take it. He's been taking her word as gospel with the, uh, the ever since the weather incident. Kelsey backs off a good distance away, and she seems to start humming something. Those effects will be revealed later. <laughs> All right. Mystery. Intrigue. Only here at the Gate Chronicles. Only here at the Gate Chronicles. All right. Valen is going to attempt an, um, a, a flurry of his attacks. Oh. Along with his small theme. So you see as Valen's frost theme seems to dance around and hit against the joints of this android. And additionally, you see as Valen, there's a lot of damage being thrown out. Holy crap. Well, that's what we keep him around for, right? I wouldn't keep him if he wasn't useful. Send this robot back to the scrapyard, Valen. I don't think that's right. Wait, what? Oh my gosh. That's not right. He's a king for a reason. Oh, hey, king to be. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, I'm just going to say right now, Valen deals 41 damage on his own with his own rapier, apparently. But and he's been theme, eating his Wheaties. The, the theme deals 12 on its own. Sure. Why not? I'm just saying, yeah. No, I mean, this... his parents own a, a smithing company that makes military-grade weapons. So only the finest for their Valen. But you can see that this android is obliterated and it is cut into shrapnel and it dies. Whoa, Valen. You, you doing all right, bud? I'm doing fine. Wow, ah, obviously. Charles Smoot's your turn. Ah. I need a will save from you, please. No. It's okay. Charles Smoot is an expert in will. Quite literally. Thank you, Bell Fighter Second Edition. A natural 20! 32 for Charles Smoot's will. You have no shreds of doubt and no fear inside of you right now. I'm raging. With the invigoration from Valen slaying one of these things, you feel like this is going to be the easiest fight ever. Absolutely. Go ahead and do what you're going to do. You said that a robot charged up to Finn, correct, but is now prone next to him? Yes. Wouldn't that therefore also be next to me? Yes. All right, well, I'm just going to wail on that until it perishes. Okay, you will wail on it until it perishes. That's the target. Swing numero uno. 25 to hit. Did you like a little sword animation? Yeah, I and mean, it, it had that colossal energy behind it, too. 25 does hit. Roll your damage. 18 damage from Charles Smoot's first attack. Okay. Charles Smoot's going to keep going, regardless of multiple attack penalty. Uh, 18 to hit. With this creature being prone, it does hit. Look at that. Another 17 damage. All right, describe to me how you obliterate this thing. Seeing as the robot in front of him was just obliterated, he turns to his left-hand side to see the one which attacked Finnevere. Down on the ground, helpless. Charles Smoot reels back and with two mighty swings, he de decapitates the creature. The first one cutting halfway through its neck and the second one delivering the final blow. Beautiful. You have um, obliterated this. You have one more thing going for you. One Anything near me? Yeah, the one that's in front of you on the ground, prone. Oh, well, I mean, listen, we'll hit that one too. Maybe, question mark? <laughs> Critical miss! 
So you uh, tell me what happens there. Uh, Charles Smoot, entirely invigorated and full of himself in a blood rage or an oil rage, if you would, at this instance, after decapitating the creature in front of him, he goes to backswing at the creature, which is prone uh, at his feet, and the sword slips out of his hands and scatters on the ground. Oh, no. Well, Charles Smoot, you are currently unarmed. With two of these androids now lifeless, question mark, you know, that they're, they're they already... Oh, oh yeah, the, 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 uh, the decapitation does have me, you know, do robots really need a head or is that just for our comfort? That's a good question. <laughs> Where is the circuit board, honestly? As far as Finn's concerned, these are metal people that have just, you know, brain sickness. <laughs> uh, so actually, can I have you both roll a perception check? For sure. I'm good at those, theoretically speaking. Not good at those today. 18 for Charles Smoot. Is he getting a plus one to uh, perceptions? I mean, do you remember to duck? Well, no. Remember. Attack rolls, damage rolls, and saves. Okay. It's not for skills. All right. Oh, shucks. Um, I did roll that, though. Uh, good. 26 for Finn. Ooh, good day. Yeah, good day. So, Charles, you don't understand anything other than this loud screeching sound that comes from this android that is off to the left a little bit. But Finnevir, you can hear somewhat distinct words. It sounds like, I can't stop. As you are uh, hearing this, finally, this one standing android charges forward and it attempts to strike at Charles Smoot. This poor android that you hear this screeching sound from just slashes at you twice, but it is unable to hit you. As you are deftly dodging out of the way, Finn of Yervir, we're back up to the top of the round. It is your turn. Uh, Finn, emboldened by everything going right for a little while, uh, he would like to attempt to go with a faint, followed up with a telekinetic projectile. He's going to, you know, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and like do some fake maneuvers, followed up by a real one that launches one of the loose marbles on the floor okay. uh, towards the uh, the robot on. Okay. All right, Finn of Yervir, if you could please roll that deception. Uh, does the 21 on his deception bypass the creature's perception DC? No, it does not. Oh, wow, 21 doesn't. They're very yeah. perceptive, apparently. They're androids. I yeah, would expect them to be. they see all things. Uh, well, uh, no sneak attack bonus. So it's going to see this coming, but it's still going to... It could still get hit. It could maybe still get hit. Sometimes. Sometimes. On good days. Okay, so from there, I'm going to say... It has partial concealment from behind Charles Smoot, based on where I think you're standing. Okay. Uh, Mentally. How do we try to go and apply concealment? You must attempt a DC 5 flat check when targeting a creature with an attack. All right. So you're just going to roll a, a D20. A D20 and see if it passes higher than a 5. You tell me. 14 is higher than 5. All right. So that, that passes. Please roll your to hit. And tell me what you're hitting with. Ooh, it's a good day. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll have him ta- uh, launch the head of one of the other, <laughs> the other robots. Okay. The newly decapitated head. You you uh, flick with force. Yep. Twenty four to hit. Okay. What is the damage? The damage. Four, five, five. Is seven. All right. So Finnevere, you flicked a head, uh, and tossing it, you hear as it <laughs> dinks across this android's head and screeches and it tilts its head looking directly at you, its eyes flaring red. And you can see that though it like actually makes like angry eyebrows. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Um, the android that is in front of Charles Smoot hey. stands up. Oh, he wants more. More. <laughs> it is going to attempt a trip on you. Ha, hype dream. Why not? Not possible. Crit happens. Full crit happens. Charles Smoot, you are tripped. Ah! You feel as this thing swipes under your legs with its clawed hand. Was this the one that's on the ground? Yep, it was the one that was (laughs) on the ground. And it is now going to attempt to hit you with its strike. That's fine. Oh, yeah. All right, so you get two critical misses on this. It falls on top of you. Pathfinder 2E is really dramatic. These dice. I like it. So both of you are now prone, but it is on top of you. Uh, You see as Kelsey runs, moves back up to Mr. Smoot and the android's location. And you see she, like, again, begins this humming. I need you to roll fortitude save, Charles Smoot. I can do that. 
Natural one for a critical fail of total 14. Uh, Mr. Smoot, you're going to take eight sonic damage I as love that. Kelsey begins this haunting hymn. Go to sleep. Please die. I don't want you here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Smoot, I didn't see you there. I'm so sorry. But you can also see as this Andrew kind of screams back. Valen turns and he sees that this uh, android is there. He is going to attempt to hit. The one on top of me? Nope, the one that is Perfect. on the other side. Sounds good to me. Okay. So you can see that uh, Valen lashes out with his rapier and you can see as he slashes across the back of this android that a, another trail of ice kind of travels down. You can see some of its joints are freezing up. It screeches in rage. The Athame, though, does not seem to have much luck, and actually the android swats it away, and you hear as it kind of clatters on the floor. Charles Moot, it's your turn, though. Uh, Me and this robot rustling and tussling down here, I'm just going to fist him as hard as I can. Okay, you and he are both on the ground. You you do the thing. Do the thing! Oh, that is quite a thing. Uh, 29 to hit. 29 definitely hits. Please roll your damage. 7 damage for the first attack. Okay, 7 damage. Rolling the second attack. 15 to hit. 15 does not hit. All right. And the third attack, maybe we roll better. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, so uh, close. So close. So close to greatness. 13 for the last one also misses. Charles, roll a will save. Oh, yeah. I should have done the beginning of my turn, right? How's he feeling? I'm pretty confident in himself. 28 for Charles Smith's will. You feel nothing except I, I'm age. just an expert in will. Yeah, I'm feeling the old age. I, like, I can't wrestle around like I used to. Old people are stubborn. Old people are very stubborn. So yeah, that's Charles Smoot's whole turn. He takes uh, three mighty swings with this robot on top of him, but only the first one manages to connect and hit him right in the side. Yeah, you see as its head like jolts to the side as you hit it, and uh, you keep punching it, but then it slowly turns its head back towards you. I give it angry eyebrows. Grrr. Okay. I keep forgetting to do this. Every time you make a successful melee against this, please roll a reflex. Oh, yeah, thank you. This be, is its no. free uh, action ability called Static Spark, and every time you land a melee, you have a chance of taking damage. Oh. That's what made these things. 17 for Charles Smith's reflex. That passes. So, once again, nobody's getting hit by these things. Imagine if they were at full it, power. Okay, no, 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 no. Let me explain something to you. The Their strike at base is plus 10. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's... I have missed almost every melee you really attack. really have. Yeah. What? That is statistically improbable, yeah. Okay. All right, so it attempted to strike at Valen three times. I'm just going to just... I just... Just finish here. It's your turn. As I understand, we're all kind of close to robots. Yep. It's accurate. There's one that is on top of Charles Smoot and the other one uh, you can see very clearly now because it is off to the side and Valen is next to it. Is there one within striking distance of a melee attack? No. If it was, you would have been provoking things if they had attacks of opportunity. So that'll be step one action, draw rapier action two, and strike for action three. Okay. Roll to hit, Jaden. Don't miss. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Seventeen. Well, that's not a critical miss on either of them. So, that's good. You just miss. So, uh, isn't it still prone on top of me? Wait, no. Jaden, you do hit. I'm sorry. Got you. All right. Roll damage, please. Damage. That'd be four for, you know, even better, two damage for the rapier, uh, which is the actual roll. And uh, now sneak attack because it was flat-footed. It is sure. flat-footed as it's prone, yeah. Oh, uh, good stuff. Yeah. We have the technology. Oh, that's six damage. And so, Finvir, you, you take a step and you you stab it with your rapier, but you see as it turns its head, jolting up, it looks at you and you can feel that your rapier is trapped in its neck, but you can tell that you've dealt some really good damage to it and it is struggling to stay alive. You do owe me a reflex save. Yeah, I was wondering about that. All right, don't fail me now. That so, should, should be good. Uh, 20. Yep, you passed. Hey! Apparently, this is just not high enough. Should have been hitting you every time. Uh, you know, you know, yeah. I, I think we could use a reprieve from, you know, 30 failed monkey kind of stuff. It's in a really awkward position because it's currently laying on top of Charles Smoot. It is going to first attempt to strike at Charles. Couldn't possibly hit me. It's oh, impossible. it hits you. No, it's impossible. It Couldn't hits possibly you. hit me. It hits. I'll hit it. We'll go toe to toe. 
You take 13 damage. Yikers. Yeah, I feel that. It screeches at you again. Charles Smoot, it reels its head back. It releases the rapier as it headbutts you. Oh, how dare it? And you take 11 damage. Oh, goodness gracious. Good thing this is me and not Finnevere. Why do you have so much? You have 85 HP. No, that's what I had after you hit me for 13. My total's 98. How do you have so much HP? Barbarian! What level are you? Six. Oh. And Finnevere. It flings its arm back, attempting to shoot you. Oh, dang. Go get shot! Its arm explodes. <laughs> Oh my God. As it charges up this shot, you can see that something short circuits in its arm, and there is a slight explosion. Love that. Now, this explosion is going to be dealing some splash damage, unless you reflex save. Oh. Charles Smoot. I get a reflex save? You're prone. I don't understand how you reflex if you're prone. I'm so reflexive. Total 15 for Charles Smoot. Oh, yeah, nah. 31 for Finn. He oh. covers his beautiful face. Uh, so, yeah, Finnevere, you uh, dodge out of the way of this, but Charles Smoot, you are going to be taking... Getting blasted today. Hey, Carlin, they're finally hitting things. A D4 of fire um, damage. You take change. two fire damage. Chump change. I'm sorry, is that a problem? No, it's just chump change. But this is going to take five damage, and you can see that it is almost dead. Ah, uh, Mr. Smoot, do you want help, or should I just leave you alone? I think he's asking for help. She's going to try and stop it. I, I couldn't tell if he said heave, like get this thing off me, or leave, it's okay. like get out of my way. It's okay. I'm going to stab it. I'm going to stab it really good. I stab it really good, I want apparently. her to miss and hit me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. She critically hits. Dang it. Oh. And... She brings down the dagger into this thing's neck, and you see his sparks fly out. I you know, yeah, no, you know what? Since you're there, I might as well have your old reflex save again. If it's short circuiting, it's gonna jolt on top of me. 19 for Charles Smooth. 19 for Kelsey, too. You both are fine as this thing kind of explodes on top of you. You are covered in oil. It's flammable. Nice and oily. It's flammable. I like this idea. Next time I'm going to add that as a new ability, like when the oil spills out, the next time they do a static, because it's fire it damage, it could ignite it. Oh, Ugh, I'm smart. Okay. Um, so, yes. See? I did it. We're good. There's only one left. Let's... I'm tired. Let's, let's get out of here. Valen's turn. Valen attempts his last hits. Come on, let's just kill this thing. I'm going to say, Charles Smoot, you are also able to do what you need to do while I roll this. Well, fine then, Valen. I see how it is. He wants to prolong this combat. No, Valen wants to kill everything, oh. critically succeed again. Well, that's good. Oh, I hear so many dice. It's beautiful. Oh, he deals 39 damage, and it dies. Everything's dead. That That is the end of combat as Valen finishes this last one off with a flourish, and you see as it, it freezes in all of its joints which then shatter and it clatters to the floor and you hear as like this last little dying screech leaves its voice box. Well, seeing as there are no more uh, enemies within sight, Charles Smith's rage would end and he would stand up. All right, how's everyone doing? Oh, just hunky-dory. Oh, no. we're fine, yeah. Child's play, oh, honestly. Yeah. All right. You each are going to receive 140 experience according to my system here. Oh, all right, well, um, Kelsey, we have you back. Yeah, right. Wait, are we good? She looks around, right? Charles Smith does a perception check real quick as well. Make sure there's no more lurking in the grass. Sure, everyone can make a perception check if they would like. Listen, you gotta check the tall grass. Uh, 31 for Charles Smith's perception. Ben figures they have it. He's trying to get his ball bearings with a little bit of a tight to woe action. Lost his balls. You find yourself standing inside of the ruins of this laboratory, and you see the remains of the other androids are surrounding the room. You don't see any of them move, though. However, you hear some sort of strange staticky sound. It sounds like almost like it's coming from below you, like a radio of some sort. Like emanating from the elevator area? It's like very faint, but you're hearing this sound, and it does sound like it's coming from below. Like in the elevator area. Okay, cool. I walk closer to the elevator area. Can I make out and distinguish what it's saying? Not from where you are, but you can hear it. All right, well, we've got the whole party back together. Who's ready to go back down? What? 
I, I guess it's not well, that bad since we handle these without much problem. And, and Valen, do you want to get paid? I absolutely would like to have a nice room again, yes. Do you know where all the nice shiny things are? You guys really want to go back down there? That's where all the nice shiny things are, Kelsey. I mean, these things probably had power cores in them. Ooh. Oh, we could that's right. that's try and pull them apart. Uh, well, they're going to be here when we get back up. There should be a user manual downstairs. Okay. Uh, do we want to maybe split up a little bit again? Absolutely not. Right. I just wanted to check. You're staying with me, young lady. Right. Um, Charles Smoot makes his way to the elevator. Yeah, uh, Ben would keep pace as much as he's a bit real freaked out about this place. <laughs> Unleashing a torrent of uh, an existential problems. Now he knows how, uh, how Smoot feels being away from his home and the desperation of unresolved issues. <sighs> Cinevere, are you okay? Kelsey is saying to you as you guys are sort of walking towards the elevator, Charles is playing with the console. <laughs> he does get it to work and it starts going down before anyone is on it, though. Yahtzee! Oh, 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 wait! Charles just jumps off. We're going to carefully follow uh, and answer Kelsey's question. <laughs> um, we've been given a lot to think about. You said we were gone for two days, was it? I don't remember exactly. There were cycles down here, at least. We, we were gone for what what must have been weeks. Uh, it it was bad enough that I don't even think that we can remember the days. It, well, because they were all the same day for one, and, and our memories are a bit scrambled. Villain kind of pops over. We did eat burgers, though. That was amazing. Um, the best thing I've had in such a long time. It was great. Honestly. So that's the kind of food your people eat normally? Yeah. Normally it's fast food because nobody has time to cook anything, but... Uh, um. So you're saying you can make those things very quickly? Wait, you had burgers? Hold on a second. I missed out on so much. So uh, the elevator is descending and Kelsey is venting her frustration about not getting to eat burgers, but she is very fascinated by the stories that you tell her of this place. And as the elevator is descending, Charles, you are hearing that the sound is further down than the floor that you were on. Further down than floor one? Mm-hmm. Can we go down further? I yeah. want to try and go to the basement floor, the oh, reactor yeah. room. Oh, yeah. You could. You could try. Yeah, I, I try that. Okay. All right. The floor we were at, familiar with. If we passed that, Ben would probably get a bit anxious and start yeah, you directing see. that towards Smoot. You you see as the floor that you recognize where the remains of that android are um, and you see like this giant ice statue of it kind of like frozen as it's like lunging towards the elevator. Oh, dang. Uh, but you see as you're passing beyond that floor. Mr. Smoot, that was our floor. Oh, well, well, why was it? Our chance to not be on this screaming metal death trap. What? No, we're, we're going down further, bud. I have a question. Where are the walls? Oh, uh, you, you don't need them. Just, just... Yeah, you, you can't even fall if you tried to. It, it, it's not that bad. It looks worse than it is. It's really only a few inches out. But don't worry, I've got you. Right? Everyone, we're good, right? Yeah, we're, we're fine. It's going to kill us, we're, right? No, we, we should be good. All right, he slowly what? kind of kind of like slips an arm around her very slowly. We're good. All right, all right. Just smacks good. the arm. <laughs> Yeah, we're fine, family. We don't need that. He pulls it away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys are in this elevator as it's going down, and it is going down very slowly, and it seems to go on for a very long time, that it's so long that it is noticeable that at a point it almost feels like it, because of how smooth it is, it almost feels like it has stopped moving. If we're on it this long, I think Finn, for one, he'd be judging all the noises that have, that would, they would be making and whether he liked them or not. And two, I think it, 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 uh, he should have a will save to see whether he, like, is affected by this. <laughs> because that, it was 15 minutes to two floors. <laughs> this thing is old and slow. Uh, how much longer, Smoot? I don't know. I took the stairs last time. It took me like 10 minutes. 10 minutes at the stairs? This thing goes. <laughs> just, just take a short rest, you know, like a little cat nap. We could set up a fire or something and. <laughs> I can uh, see the sky above us. Maybe we take the stairs on the way back up. That would be nice. Uh, stairs are great. I'm familiar with stairs. Those are good things. The nice thing, though, is that as you are going down, the whole way is... Uh, no, 
initially when you start going down, the way was most like was almost completely dark. But as you get closer down towards where Charles Smith, you know where the core is, there are lights that come on. Oh. Magic oh. on top. This is very high tech. Oh, they have a nuclear reactor down here. They have a what? A nuclear reactor. Isn't that dangerous? Only if it explodes. Well, it, it, <laughs> That's why we were stuck in a time loop. Because it exploded? Oh, uh, well, no, technically it's because I ate. Uh, actually, yes, it's because it exploded, well, Mr. Well, it was we because, were there. It was because we a exploded. time ray gun was thrown into the nuclear reactor. Time ray gun? What is this, some sort of sci-fi star smack? What? What? Pretty self-explanatory. It was a gun that could make plants age up and age back. That's not self-explanatory. But it went into a big magic power reactor, which made it go critical. Why? And then everything ate uh, forward and back. Even everything itself. Wait, which is wh- time. why? You know, honestly, I gotta give it to the kid. He did a good job at explaining this one. Who good just, job, Finn. Why? How did it end up? Oh, never. oh, well, you know, our good friend, uh, wannabe comedian robot pal, uh, he Who? tripped on a dumbbell. Oh, pal, he's gonna be great. Uh, don't, I can't wait for you to meet him. Don't worry, Kelsey. It's a metal person, but I don't, I hope he's okay. He's one of the good ones. We think. Oh, was. What? Well, what, do you, what do you think happens after thousands of years, Finn? I don't know. I never lived that long. I well, exactly. Know. You'd probably go crazy. I don't know, but it feels like that long while we're on this elevator. It finally does touch down to the floor at this point, though. Finn's oh, gonna jump off. <laughs> Smooth just very calm and collectively steps off the platform. All right. And now you all can very clearly hear that there is this sort of, like, radio-ish, or, like, this staticky sound, which Kelsey and Charles would recognize as, like, a radio sound. But Finnevere, it's like... The only words you could probably use to describe it is like the ocean in a way, hmm. which you've never really seen. So you can't even use you can use it, it as lakeside. It's, it's like really soft gravel. <laughs> what? What is that sound? Ah, it's horrible. It's uh, I think we call that white noise. It sounds like a static from some type of communication device. Well, for where I come from, noise doesn't have colors. Yeah, Kelsey, why are you... Uh... I'm sorry. I didn't think it was going to be that bad of a statement. What, are we but profiling I guess our noise now? Yes, I guess so. Gosh. Uh, we'll we'll roll a perception forward. check as we're in a new room. Yeah, please. Let's see what we see. 15 for Charles Smoot. What was uh, Finnevere's perception? Oh, um... He's still looking at the elevator. <laughs> all right, no, all right, for real. 20. You actually can't even see into the nuclear reactor room because there is moss that is covering the floor and the windows that would allow you to look into the room. The room itself is essentially locked and requires a key card or an identification card to get in, but you can't see in except for Finevere, who is able to see a very small bit of light that seems to be coming out through some cracks in the moss. And you try to rub the moss away? Sure. Uh, And He tries to rub the moss away. He goes up, he begins (laughs) and he dies a little bit and sneezed as the moss kind of went up his nose. Fungus and all and moss. Dusty moss. Dusty. All these words that don't describe moss. (laughs) (laughs) Fungus, moss, all the same thing. You clear it away as best as you can, smearing the the green against the glass, and you peer through this fogged window, and you can see the dim light from the nuclear reactor, but you also see on the wall this moving picture, which seems to play for a good bit, and you hear like what sounds kind of like a voice, but it's muffled and hard to hear, but you can clearly hear static from inside. But I can't see the shape of uh, the moving picture. Is it the good doctor? You can't see the shape. You see, like, a corner of it. You can tell it's one of those moving pictures, though, because it keeps, like, parts of the bottom corner of it seem to change. Maybe they have a sequel to Ringbot. Ringbot 2. Ringbot, come home. (laughs) Kelsey hasn't (laughs) seen it yet, either. Oh, it's a tearjerker. Okay, Smoot, do you still have the level 3 access? What? I I don't know. Smoot checks his person to see if he has anything from back then. It does seem as though that is on your person still. Oh, I, I do have the key card. Thank you, Mr. Monkey. I've never been called that before, but here you go, bud. No, I know. No, the, the smooth hands. Curtis, 
And without him, this wouldn't be possible. Oh, by the way, um, that big monkey-like creature from before with the big metal arm. His name's Curtis. It has a name? Oh, yeah, and that cyborg robot arm, he made it himself. Wait. According to the good doctor, he's a scientist. He makes things. Wait, how, wait so you had hamburgers. Apparently, wait, this, this gorilla's been alive for how long? Good question. Oh, oh, gosh. That is a good question. Maybe it's a descendant. They <gasps> all have missing limbs. I don't think that's how that works. Maybe it's like Assassin's Creed where they all just cut off the one missing limb. She just stares oh, off into the gosh. distance. I think you've been playing too many video games, Kelsey. I, just, with, just with Kevin. That's all. So, uh, Finnevir, you see that there is a rectangular slot where the card looks like it should be placed. All right. He tries to place it on, like, it lay down or, like, slide? It's against the wall. Okay, he tries to flat it up against there. You see a green light blink on, and you see as the door slides open. Oh my gosh, that actually worked. That was, like, the first thing I tried. Congratulations, you figured out an automatic door with a bass card. Boom, worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Magic door. Valen walks in behind Finnevir. And you all move into the room, I assume. I'm going to hold up the, the card at the door to, like, I, I'm worthy. <laughs> what is Charles Smoot currently doing? Um, He would be, as he enters, specifically looking for... He would probably be looking for the user manual for the robots. Okay, you can make a new perception check then. The relics should be relatively easy to find, if he recalls correctly, but information on the robots, he was told by Pal, should be down here in some sort of book form. Uh, so, 28 for Charles Smith's perception as he looks through the room. 17 for Finn. So, uh, Finnevere, you are immediately drawn to this wall where you see a moving picture, and it does appear to be almost of Dr. Rift. And, like, you all can hear this voice very clearly. And, Charles, you... Your attention is also drawn to this as you hear this woman's voice more clearly, though slightly staticky, as she is speaking this looped message to you. To you, travelers who ventured here, to you who stepped across time, and to those who discovered this colony long after we're gone, I leave you this message. Approximately four hours prior to the recording of this message, I received orders that I'm to leave one of my precious projects behind. And if you've encountered him, as they said you had, then Curtis might still be alive. And this is the right decision. Part of my research, as dictated by Oros, has been to work towards manipulation of life. This colony has certainly aided in that, but it's not enough. We're too close for this to end, and if Curtis is still alive, as I was told, then all hope is not lost. If the anomaly is as real as I've seen, I'm not sure what sort of effect that might have had on him or the biome that has been established in this Elsa shelter. Stopping it could be detrimental as well. Please, don't hurt Curtis. He is a precious subject. Instead, continue where I had to leave off. Care for him and document his growth, his age, his intelligence, until his last breath. Complete my research. I'm certain that the Order would offer you a great reward. In the hopes that all goes according to plan, I've released my PA-1 unit from his restrictions to the lab, so that he can provide for Curtis in the meantime. He'll probably still be around. Though if there is any issue with the reactor or his charging dock, he will at least have the option to visit the Memorial Garden in the South. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, uh, that was great. Like, is this a video game where we're like, we get to keep that recording and we can listen back to it? Actually, as you are all drawn to this screen and you're watching it, Kelsey and Valen are looking at it quite intently. Uh, Charles and Finnevere, you see what looks to be like a console of sorts at the base of this image, a keyboard for Charles Smoot and for Finnevere, lots of little squares with what appears to be letters on them. Letters that you can't read. Big Monkey Joins Party. Is that what's being written? Yep, that's what I'm writing down right now. No monkey is joining the party. What do you mean? He is an invaluable asset. 
The the Red Guard might have guns, but we have Big Monkey. Uh, but what if they hurt Big Monkey? <laughs> we heal him. We'll uh, Kelsey kind of speaks up. Ah, uh, that's a uh, kind of beyond our area of expertise, I would assume, right, everyone? Uh, certainly. I've never cared for a creature long, uh, bigger than a lizard before. Uh, you have experience with Cerulean, right? Ah, yes, because that translates, you know, 10 foot tall elk, 30 foot tall monkey, practically identical creatures. I mean, we could just turn this over to uh, Lord Eden. Uh, I feel like we could have a discussion with her, but at the same time, I don't know how hospitable she is going to be to such a creature. But more importantly, you can meet Pal. Oh, you do get to meet Pal. This will be a great day. Oh, yeah. He's one of the good metal people. Oh, well, that's fine, but we also have a job to do. We're supposed to be documenting this entire cavern. Which, there's no better way of doing that than by going to the south. Right. Well, I mean, on the upside, there's a lot of relics in here. All together. In one room. Ah! Uh, but maybe that means, Kelsey, that relics aren't as unstable as people first originally thought. Well, they're all kept in one room in, like, reliquaries, right? Exactly. So, I mean, maybe it's just a myth about keeping multiple relics together. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, from personal experience, I accidentally carried four for, like, a day, and then uh, I had that major migraine for, like, 48 hours. Are you sure you weren't drinking enough water? I, are you sure you maybe just weren't mishandling them? I mean, maybe, like, one got bumped the wrong way and you, like, triggered some negative voodoo side effects. I don't know enough about relics, but at very least, we probably could split them up amongst us and not get too close. I mean, uh, grab what you can, kids. Uh, was Charles Smoot able to find a, a manual or anything? No, Charles Smoot, as you looked around the room, you saw no paper objects. Mm. The only thing you found was what appeared to be this console of sorts, which has uh, a user in- interface on it, but it looks like currently it is set to loop this video. Can I try and close out of the video? Whoa, you whoa. can attempt to do so. All right, I'll, I'll close out the video. And- try to uh, you know record it with the ring bot. Nonsense, we'll be fine. You have a photographic memory, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> a paraphrased at best. <laughs> is there an option to minimize? There is. I don't know. How experienced are you with Windows 36? That's a good <laughs> question. How experienced am I with Windows 36? Oh, yeah, no. When you, like, push the fing- like you push your fingers together to try to minimize it, it actually just, like, uh, just deletes everything on the computer. Oh, no, that's the factory reset <laughs> button. How foolish of me. You find this surprisingly intuitive. Hmm. And, in fact, you are able to navigate this like it was your old work computer. Obviously, there are some differences with the way that folders are set up, but navigating this is a lot easier than you've ever... It's like using an iPhone. Critical question. Do they still use the floppy disk as the save icon? Absolutely. (laughs) They use all of the old logos. All right. um, It's not Windows, though. I search up PA1. Okay. Uh, You search, you type in PA, and you start to see as a bunch of unit numbers show up behind it, and you see one that says PA01. Cool. I select that one. Okay. You select it. It pops up. You see a very brief information uh, manual that essentially says, welcome to your new PA01 unit. This unit is meant to be a personal assistant who can provide general information, but is mostly there to work as a support android, offering emotional as well as physical support as needed. Well, what Smoot would do is he, is he would take time parsing through uh, the documents on this device, attempting to find out where like the power cores to the androids might be housed. Okay, sure. You know that they are housed in the chest area, similar to a heart, but more centralized and closer to the stomach, abdomen, diaphragm, that area. Wow. That's a nice system. I wonder. Charles Smoot types in Roanoke, Virginia. Okay. You type in Roanoke. What are you trying to do? Yeah, I mean, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to see if Charles Smoot can figure out anything in regards to the sleep study. Let's see if any documents on that were saved on this computer. 
or like if this computer is connected to the like the larger Oros network in general. Okay. Cool. Payday indeed if it still works by the time the next team gets here. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You begin typing in this location. However, there is no internet connection. That's fair. Uh, Charles Smoot. Wait, does it still have our names? Charles Smoot types in his name. You see again, no internet connection. Ah. But in the bottom corner, you see, would you like to connect to the Oros servers? Yeah. <laughs> what? Why would you ever do that? Charles Smoot clicks yes. All right. You click yes, but you see as a new prompt appears on the screen. For Finnevir, it's it's just a bunch of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Finn gets bored. <laughs> and Finn goes and starts collecting yeah. relics. As you look at this, you see on the screen appears this new prompt, which requests an access code. Finn, do you still have that ID tag on you? ID tag for what? The, 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 the good doctor's little plastic guardy thingy with her face on it. Oh, the one you just handed me. Yeah, can I have it back? Smoot takes it, um, and he tries to see if there's anything that would resemble something that could be utilized as an access code. Oh, yeah, those those cubes underneath the uh, the screen. What, uh, is that gibberish in your language? Nope, that's common English. So it is. You yeah. could just say yes. What? No, it's not gibberish. I can read this. Uh, it looks like Arthdal was a, um, a di- uh, what is it, a dialect? What is that called when they make a new, like, uh, conlang? It's you a new I language. Were, you think I ever paid attention in any of my English courses, my I'm remedial sorry. studies that they required of me? It was one of my favorite classes. I'm sorry. Uh, no, and Kelsey kind of goes over with you very briefly about the alphabet trying to correlate some things. I don't know if it will stick, though, so that's something we can use if you would like to recall or try a linguistics check later. Charles Smoot, as you're examining this this badge, you do see that Rebecca Rift is written on there. You do see that there are several, like, groups of numbers. One of them seems like it might fit. I'll try that one. All right. You put in this sequence of numbers. However, you get a brief loading icon. Oh. Followed oh. by an error. Ah. And then the screen seems to flash a red color. That's always ominous. Where there's this just like swirling image. Of? It looks like the Oros logo. And you then see the words on the screen appear. Hello, Charles. Oh, I don't I don't like you. Charles just like very angrily and very curmudgeonly grandpa's like just hits the escape key a bunch of times. Is this not what you wanted? And you then see, as those words fade away, don't worry, Mother is watching. Oh, who are you? What do you want? And Charles Smith just, like, grabs the screen and starts angrily shaking it's, it. It's projected onto the wall. Uh, it's onto the wall? Yeah, the screen is projected onto the wall. Oh, interesting. Just beats the wall. Yeah, Charles Smith, like, pounds his fist against the wall then. Who are you? What do you want? Careful, Smoot, you'll cause a cave-in. You just see as those words fade away again, and it says, We're so glad that you made your way back. You travelers are very important to us. We hope to see you again soon. Kelsey walks over to you. Uh, Mr. Smoot, are you okay? No! Some maternal figures trying to tell me what to do. I am too old to be having this chain of command right now. But the strange thing is, speaking of which... The way that mother is spelled is not as it typically is. How's it spelled? It is spelled M-O, and then there's this strange symbol. It's called a thorn, followed yeah, by an R. They are a thorn in my side. See you soon? What do you mean, hope to see you soon? See you where? You see as once again on the screen appear new words. We're sure you have many questions about our promise. It has not failed you. Then send me back. If you seek answers, then you should come to Taija. The mother will await your presence. Ha! Bad chance of that. Between us and there, there's a league of red guards. We'd never make it throw. Wait, isn't that where... Yes. Cece is? I already said yes. Yeah, but I was... Wait, 
saying it out loud because sometimes speaking them to reality is important. And then once again, you see... Just been here that? Yeah, you do. But then, Charles, you see as new words appear on the screen. Hello, Kelsey. We're so glad to see you as well. You have been quite the troublemaker. And then the screen goes blank. What did I do? I'm so confused. Did, did you guys say you know where Sisu went? She, 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 fin, oh, she was so much. She, she was captured by the Red Guard. All right. We failed to rescue her. And Amali went off in her direction, right? I don't know what happened to Amali. Uh, and he's Amali. If anything, I'm more f- afraid for the Red Guard. And who, who knows? Uh, but the, the John Xavier was working with them, though. I guess. But when last I saw Amali, he was getting dogpiled on by like 20 Raylund Guard. That true? That's what. And then there was a giant fiery inferno. I didn't stay long enough to find out the end of the story. I had to get out of there. Valen was injured. You can see that Valen's mood. He he's walked over, but you can see that as this conversation has come up, his mood sours. <sighs> well, I don't know what damn thing we're supposed to do about it. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Let's get out of this place. Did you loot the room? I've got enough. Charles Smoot will try and swipe a few things on his way out. Before. Sure. Uh, he tries to look for the stairs instead of the elevator. Okay. Lined around the area, you can see that there are a number of what you would deem to be relics. They're just lined up along the walls on these docks. Dumb question. Is Does any of them look like the gun? You actually do see what looks like a similar gun there. But you didn't spend much time handling it yourself, so you're not exactly sure if it's the same one. But hey, to you, it definitely looks like it. Oh, yeah. Then that then that's one of them. Hmm. Mm. Mr. Smoot. What? It's probably better to get out of here, but there was a really nice pen on floor two. You want me to go back up there for a pen? I could write anything I would think. You know what? Sure. We'll no, go up there for it's, a it's no, no, no. All right. I don't know. It's fine. What, what, I mean, what, what else could we possibly be doing better with our time? Here, you hand uh, me one of those relics, and you, you can go get your pet. And Charles Smith just takes one of the ones from that he's holding in his arms. Okay. Oh, uh, well, hmm. How much is that pen worth to you, Finnevier? You can't have more than three relics, right? Right. Well, then I'll take this one off your hands, and you we can go get your pen. Uh, Charles, you are able to find the stairs with ease. It's a small... It's almost like a secret door in the wall that you'd have to be looking really close to find. But since you've used it before, you find it easily and you take the badge and press it up against the wall where there is a very well hidden key slot. And you put it there and it opens and you see as the door slides, the dark stairwell greets you with a few lights that kind of like flicker on. Sweet stairs. Oh, my legs. I can already feel them hurting. We don't have to die on the death trap. Imagine if it fell like halfway through. Question, do the stairs go all the way up, Mr. Smoot? Uh, they do. Yeah, last time I ran them. Unless for some reason there was a building collapse in the last 2,000 years. I so just who wanted, knows? I just wanted to make sure. Uh, they did not go all the way up. Oh, you're right. They only made it to the second floor and then you had to take a step to it. Uh, wait. One second thought. No, they went 90% of the way up. They got to use a different staircase to get from floor two to floor one. And okay. you know where this other staircase is? Well, I found it back when, so as long as it didn't move. But again, who knows? All right, let's go. And you all begin making your way up the stairs. Mm-hmm. Until about 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, a certain amount of time later, since you're not running, <laughs> you make your way up the stairs onto floor two. There are no lights at the top of the stairs. This area seems dark. The only light that you can see is all the way down the hall, which seems to be coming from the elevator shaft. Torch time. Yeah, I guess we, we would light a torch, and that would be enough for us to see 30 feet. So, uh, where are these other stairs? Uh, oh wait, Finn, you wanted to find this pen? Oh, that's right. You wanted to go to those other rooms. We, we try to point out things and, like, give a mini tour on the way. It's like, and there was a shower there. It had hot water. Oh, a shower. Oh, how I wish I had one of those. And, like, really weird outhouses. 
I'm assuming that Mr. Smoot was the oh. first one to use it. Oh, the toilets were great, Kelsey. But then, you see, I snapped back to reality for half a moment in the middle of a shower. Don't think too long about that. Uh, and the water all of a sudden turned to cockroaches. Now I'm thinking about it. Oh, no. Just shower thoughts. <laughs> So you guys make your way down and Finavir, you find the room where you remember the pen being. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. Mm -hmm. You are going to roll a percentile die. Mm -hmm. This pen, due to its exposure in the environment, has a 30% chance of not functioning anymore. Oh, that means it has a 70% chance of functioning anymore. I will tell you. I like those odds. Anything you take from the top floor, which has had more exposure, has a 70% chance of not working. Oh, nice. Okay. 90%? Okay. So, Finnevere, you walk in immediately straight to the desk where you remember the pen being. You open the drawer, and you see it's there. There's dust all around it. You pick it up. We came here for a pen. That's, um... Oh, they have the best parchment ever. The parchment oh, because the paper. is so bad now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the best parchment ever. Better take it with you. I don't know what to tell you. That's all right. I always carry some. That's what Mildew will do to it. And he'll he'll close his eyes and look away and start writing, Check it out, Smoot. Isn't this neat? <laughs> I mean, okay, I'll give it to you. That's kind of cool. Uh, that's really cool. I wonder how far away you have to be to do that. What? Yeah. Or like yeah. how far away you you could yeah. be. Yeah, like could you be like on the other side of the room? Uh, he sets it down and he like takes two steps back and goes, "There's no way this works." Okay. Does it work? He like thinks it real hard and like ch- extends his hand. It does not work. Yeah, no, I don't think it works like that. That's uh, weird. Oh well, that's cool. Now you kind of kind of wrong. Oh wait, wait, okay. So he'll try to think out like a paragraph. Okay. It's just smooth, like like thirty times, and then as it starts writing, he tries to let go of it. Okay, so it's always been able to work without Finnevir holding it. Well, he didn't know that. But now he does, because as he lets go and he's thinking, the pen continues to write. Oh, oh that, that's actually freaky. You know, I thought it was really funny because you were just writing with your eyes closed. I mean, it's still kind of impressive. But, but this is even cooler. I mean, that's pretty good. Like, if you get kidnapped and you were for some reason holding the pen while writing and then you let go of the pen and continue thinking, maybe it keeps a mind link. Maybe you can make a journal of my dreams. Who knows? Oh, that'd be horrifying. You should not journal your dreams. What do you mean? Dream journals can be very impactful for unblocking one psyche. Oh, not for the ones I've been having. Wait, excuse me? <clears throat> Wait, young lady, we're going to have to talk about this later well, this evening when we, we settle camp. All right, fine. Can we get out of here finally? Absolutely. Let's go. All right, so. Book it in. We make our way out. Yes, you do. You make your way back up to floor one, where you see corpses of androids everywhere. And I try and take some power cores out of their chest. All right, so you can attempt to do so. What well, would you how many? Roll? How many are you going to attempt? All four of them. All right, so you go over. You were going to be rolling, so we'll just use Lore Seeker for now. Because this is relic related. This is technology related. All right, so do you want me to roll four of these? Yes, you will roll four. Okay of these, and you will also need to roll a percentile die for each one. Remember, these have a... Crit fail on the first one. Okay, you you completely obliterate. In fact, it explodes in your hands and you take a d6 of fire damage. Ow! Just, just, oh, fine. That one, that one, there's, that was the one that someone stabbed through the, through the chest. Clearly faulty power. Uh, 23 for the second one. Okay. You managed to remove it. Now, please roll a d100. 70% chance of failure. 51. Yeah. Yeah, if you had taken these prior, I was actually hoping you guys would try and steal some of these prior. Then it would have been a 30% chance. Mm. 12 for the other or seeker. Mm-mm. I, your DC is about 15. 16. Yes. Awesome. All right. Let's see. So uh, we got to get it. We got to get above a 70. Oh, 62. Nothing. Yeah. Can, can Finn take an arm? Finn can take a mechanical arm. Sure. Mm. That's one bulk. Might be stretching what his understanding of these things are. He thought they were people that could just be magic. Finnevere, you do remember, though, seeing a blue glow from where their charging stations were, if you remember correctly. Oh, I definitely do remember that. And there were like four charging stations in this room, right? There are dozens, uh, like a hundred. They're literally lining up against the wall and they climb up the ceiling. Like there are androids that are like stacked on top. Oh, Hmm. so we could spend all day here just trying to rip them out of androids. Hmm. He just looks up at all the androids. This could be the biggest payday we've ever had, or that any Seekers ever had. 
Yeah, if we don't mess it up. But if we wake them up, it'll be equivalently tied with all the worst paydays, which is dying. Yeah. I mean, we're only here to scout. If we tell individuals that there's a giant potential source of power cores here. I mean, yeah, but also the ones we have look like they're in perfect working condition. Like, these are some of the best ones I've ever seen. So all the relics that you that you guys grabbed are in pristine condition. They look like they're brand new, and they look like they will function more than once. You seem to have gathered some multi-use that'll probably be worth some good money. Uh, maybe we just cut our gains here and uh, learn to appreciate what we have. Greed is good, but there are limits. And who knows, maybe uh, your girlfriend will pay us more. I mean, she probably will after I have a conversation with her. Mr. Smoot, I didn't know you had moved on. What kind of conversation? Ew! The one where we get paid, Kelsey. What kind of relationship do you have, Mr. Smoot? This has been going on for a while, Finn. I'm not sure exactly. Just don't don't dig into it. He gets really testy. We're, 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 we're going to the southern area. All right. So I get to bring back the map. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you don't understand. We look forward to this. This is the, the highlight of our month, is listening to this music. So, gentlemen, it's time to, first off, reconnoiter, travel, no! back. You know, time space, swimy wimies really got me tuckered out, guys. Maybe we should call it for the day. Dang it. What? Dang it. If we refuse the ring bot to record Dr. Rift. We could have played it back for Monkey. Well, I mean, well, you know, listen, our word's pretty go- good. I'm sure she told Curtis about us, and Pal will recognize us right away. So. That's the best bet we got. Gentlemen, as you are exiting the building, please roll a perception check. If we get blasted with another rainbow beam and go oh. back to the 70s. <laughs> hey, I'd love to go back to the 70s. 27 for Charles Smoot. 14 for Finn. <laughs> All of you can see that as you walk out of this building, this once dead area is now teeming with life. There are trees that are extending far, far above your heads over the building. And you can actually see that there are some strange looking animals walking around the area. Oh, so, oh wow. Uh, I, I guess we fixed that. Uh, yeah. I did not realize that this changed... A lot. Where Weird. You, where would you take your rest? Well, I kind of just stuck it out outside for a little bit, and then I would come back in. It was actually safer out here than it was in there. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. But while you were resting and making camp, it wasn't like this? No. It was mostly dead. I actually, there's like a, can you see this, this pile of tree limbs over by the corner that are covered in leaves now? Yeah, I made like a little hovel. And she points to it. It's like a little distance away from the building. Uh, how quaint. Uh-huh. I know. I'm very proud of myself. Don't laugh at me, okay? Well, why don't we make camp there for the night? Sure. I, I mean, guess. It, look, it looks homey. Additionally, while you guys are kind of like looking around, you see off in the northwest area, there seems to be some sort of tall tower that is sticking up all the way into the cavern ceiling. That was not there before? It was there, but you never really took notice of it because when you walked into this area, first of all, you can see that there seems to be an artificial cavern wall that is surrounding it on one side, that it seems to block its view from the way that you approached, and you can only see it from the angle that you're standing at now. Oh, well, uh, that's, that's odd. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's a problem for another day. I guess we'll get to that when we map out later, because I'm sleeping, as I have lived two weeks in the past two days and have not really had a good proper sleep. Okay, all right. Well, while you guys get camp situated, I can draw the map part if you want. You know what? Sure, Kelsey. I, I have faith in you. All right, I can do this. I've been doodling. Oh, God. Doodaloo. Maybe I shouldn't trust her. Doodaloo. Clearly, she went insane with us. It was really about me. <laughs> so, as you guys are preparing camp, you hear a terrible tearing sound. Don't say that better have been your pants, your shirt, a ligament, anything but my map. Well, let's just say that the map is, uh, this is an area that has been marked as 
No. But this is a very yes area. A very aggressively lucrative yes area. It's fine. It's just a doodle. It's not the actual map. She rolls up a map and puts it to the side. A map or the map? <laughs> yeah, I can... roll a perce- Can I do a, a perception to sense her motive? You may attempt to do so. Charles us move with a 31. He can sniff out a liar and a cheat any day of the week. You can tell that there is definitely um, some damage done to the main map. She could failed. Kelsey. She has a 10 for this. There was nowhere else to write. I'm really sorry. I panicked. There was a butterfly kind of flew up my face. It's all right. We'll fix it when we get back. <laughs> Just how, how about I, I hold on to this from now on? Okay, thank you. Charles Smoot takes it from her. I'm sorry I tried to be helpful. It just did not work out this time. Hey, Smoot, you seem to be more acquainted with the rules. Could we make, like, m- several of these maps and then maybe trade them off to the Seekers? Seems to be a lucrative area. Uh, yeah, Finn, that's that's kind of how that works. Um, but uh, basically that's what we're getting paid for. We're getting paid to make the map. So they pay us to make this map, then we submit the map to them. They redistribute copies of said map to individuals who take quests in this area. Need to be the guy who stands all day writing maps. The same map, over and over again. How do you know they don't have a relic for it? A relic to me. Relics will be taking our jobs. Now you understand. You know what? Good on you, Finn. You're finally coming around. You're getting it. (laughs) Let's make sure relics don't take our jobs. (laughs) No. We'll find more relics to take all of our jobs. We don't have to do anything. No, that's bad. <laughs> then we don't have anything to do. So, gentlemen, uh, you guys set up camp and you rest. Yeah. Too enthusiastic thumbs up. Now, the next day comes. You feel some rumbling off in the distance. Shout at the top of my lungs. Curtis! But we're, we're not ready for him. And he doesn't know us. He might know of us. But that... that, that uh, he met us before. Well, okay, we, we, we met him in a very bad location and very bad way. Uh, didn't that video say something about uh, the the PA1 unit? Yeah, pal. He, he should be in the south, but um, I, I feel like we could probably have a conversation with Curtis. Worst case scenario, we run away, right? Well, shouldn't we, like, meet the PA1 unit first, pal? You, uh, you want us to go all the way to the bottom of this cavern... Just to meet the monkey eventually when we're going to meet him anyways. What if the monkey uh, let us go last time? Well, then what's going to say he won't do it a second time? No, we are avoiding monkey for now. We're either going to that tower to scope it out as for our job, or we're going down south to find Pal. We're we're going down south to find Pal. Fine. We'll go that way. Uh, All right. Let's let's do this. We've done some uh, mapping of this area already, so we should be pretty good traveling through it. All right, sounds good. Uh, we go south. Uh, we'll follow the ridge line, uh, moving our way kind of southeasternly direction as we already came up um, at a northwestern angle. So I don't want to like double traverse areas we've already filled in. Okay. Oh, are we uh, filling out more of the map on the way? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Okay. So again, reconnoiter, map. All right. So perception and then survival. Hmm. And uh, Finn will be backseat scoping. Don't even need it. I fixed the map, if anything. Mended it back together. Yeah, you uh, you know how to make a um, paste that can actually repair the map. Charles has a 24 for his perception on the recon and a natural crit total of 30 on his survival to do the map. Okay, you continue on by traveling? Darn skippy we do. Travel. You see a beautiful overview of some of this area. You can actually see slightly above the trees. Slightly. Ah. What a beautiful overview of this area. I can see slightly above the trees. Oh, you do what I do. I love doing this to you all the time. It's like repeating exactly what you said. All right, uh, we'll move on to the next area uh, and do a recon and a map. 23 for Charles Smoot's perception on recon and a 28 for Charles Smoot's map. Yep, you continue to succeed at this uh, at your task. Finn was very distracted in this area. I don't know what he saw, but it was very. it's quite captivating. Yeah, what did Finn see? Dagon bees again. He saw a giant bee fly by. Uh, very just, nervous for like a solid half hour. Was Charles Smoot able to identify it? Was it Norville? It was not Norville. Oh, you, you better keep away from that one. That one could be menacing. Continuing onward. Mm. Travel. Isn't that all? How many points do we have left? Because we have 10 total. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have four left. 
to the recon. He has uh, 26 on the perception. Your dice got in my way. Charles Smith's to map was only a 14 this time as Finnevere's die hit mine digitally. I see Finn's being a little overcorrective here. So this area, it's not that you failed, it's just not well done. What, what, do you, what do you mean this crag was to the right? I clearly saw it on the left. Oh, it, crag goes like this. I saw it on the way back. What, 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 what do you mean on the way back? We're oh, only like walking we forward. It. We're looking behind, and then it went like this. Well, yeah, you, you, you can't tell direction by looking backwards. You've turned. Uh, um, I think I hear a waterfall nearby. Well, what? What? I'm sorry, I got distracted. And they all continue <laughs> on to the next area. <laughs> And that travel, this is good that's enough. your last travel for the evening. And as you enter into this area, please roll a perception check. This is not a recon. Just to make sure we don't get murdered by venomous plants. I just watched somehow it's Chico again. And his banditos, they made their way down. No, that he doesn't have any of those left. <laughs> Gentlemen, as you enter into this space, you begin to notice that the hue of the plants seem to have changed. The further into this area that you have walked, you, the more you've noticed that the color of almost everything in the area has slowly become more red until everything seems almost like a dark crimson color. The leaves, the bark, the, the grass on the ground, and even some of the animals seemed to have a reddish tint to their fur or their feathers. Oh, that, that's certainly odd. That's weird. Uh, Don't eat the berries. I was about to say, we need to eat something. I'm out of rations. I mean, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, Charles Smoothman will attempt to forage while he's here for the evening. Okay. Then we'll see if he can hunt one of the animals. Sure. Nothing bigger or same size than a deer. <laughs> a deer's a medium creature. That's a bold statement. You're going to hunt a medium creature? The same thing, the same size no, as you? No, no. Any, whatever it is, it will be smaller than a deer or it won't be. <laughs> It won't be hunted. Ah, uh, uh, but Finnevere, remember, the only deer you know of are the blue fan elk. Which are large creatures. Which okay, that's the... right. They can't make, um, not, well, not, uh, that, well, that to be the comparison. Nothing as big as a blue fan elk. Uh, Charles has a total 20 on his survival to subsist off the land. Okay. You go and you forage, gathering around uh, berries and fruits, and you bring them back with you to the group. And Finnevere, what is your check? 25. Oh, yeah. You Nature find man. you find a red quail. I was about to say a red herring. <laughs> <laughs> it's a red herring. Oh, no. If you go if you go a little bit um, to your east shore. There'll be red herrings. All that. Look, everyone. I have a red herring. Pay close attention. So you begin to eat this food. And for some reason, as you're eating it, your body feels invigorated. Oh, and health potion food. And healthier than it has ever been. Do I heal any of my missing 30 damage? You actually are going to heal by 3d8 plus 10. Oh, best meal of my life! 3d8. However, I need you to roll a fortitude save. Oh no. To not poop it all out. Okay, let's see. How, how does my body like this? I'm such a fortuitous individual. 31 for Charles Smoot on his fortitude save. Okay. So you noticed as you ate the first of your um, items that you had gathered, everything felt fine and you felt great. As you started to eat the second one, you started to feel a gurgling in your tummy, Ooh. but it passed really quickly. Oh, it's a little bit of indigestion. Oh, that's right. Now again. Oh, oh, I feel the same thing. Oh, that's... No, that's fine now. Good food, really good food. Oh my gosh! You see, as Balin is vomiting over in the corner. Whoa, 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 Balin, keep that to yourself. I'm sorry. After I ate the second one, I couldn't, I couldn't stomach it anymore. I'm sorry. There's still some quail. <laughs> it seems that this food, which is called <laughs> good, can, good, it's it's called either it depending on what you gather, uh, the crimson food or crimson water. It has a healing effect of three d eight plus ten. But if you consume more than a quantity of one of these things, you are required to roll a fortitude save for each item consumed. And it's a DC 22 fortitude save, or you are sickened three. Is it if you eat more than one in a day? Yeah. And you, of course, you can only eat or drink the food as long as it keeps. 
I am full now after sleeping and eating the food. You express the benefit? Huh? Because all, all that uh, Kelsey and uh, Finn didn't have to make a save, did he? Oh, yeah. Yes. You ate it. If you ate the red, anything in this area that is the color red requires a save. Oh, that's a neg crit. I never wrote down what a pure negative oh, crit is, no. but I will put you at second. I will double the second. I think the effect is doubled. Oh, that's right? that's, so that's for a full six. minute then, right? How does that work? You cannot willingly ingest anything. You take a status penalty equal to the value in all checks. Yes. Uh, you can spend a single action uh, attempting to vomit in order to recover, which immediately allows you to reattempt the fortitude save of the effect. On success, you reduce it by one. Yeah, no, he's right there with uh, with Valen. <laughs> like, <laughs> vomiting for like the next minute or two straight. Wow, that is the best meal I have ever had. Oh, yeah, that was really good. Oh, no. Oh, oh, what's wrong with you guys? Oh, oh, gosh. Stay away from the quail. It has turned. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was your evening. Yeah, that was our evening. You guys rest. Yeah. You will recover from your sickened condition. There is a stream going through this area, or a river, rather. Is the wa- Does the water have a red hue to it as well? Yes. Um, I mean, eventually we would have to refill our canteens. Yeah. Charles would like to refill his water skin. Okay. How many consumptions does this have? As much as your canteen allows you. No, I told you, this is a this is technically a higher level item, but it's consumable. It has a slight drawback, though, because it's technically better than a, re- a regular moderate healing potion. So uh, Charles Moot goes over and he begins, uh, as he comes to this stream, which he notices has this red hue to it. He's filling up his water skin. Yeah, Charles Moot is filling up his water skin, his canteen. Smoot, what are you doing? Getting water to drink. That water that nearly killed Valen and I? Well, I guess it wasn't the water, but it's the, everything here is red. Yeah, the food that helped heal my wounds faster than normal. And Charles Smoot just shows the scar on his chest from the previous robot fight, which is now fully healed. All right. Um, it's not good to rely on if you uh, have to drink it all the time. Yeah, but if we don't find a different water source, then we'll be out of water, which is bad. Well, I mean, we could drink this just not right. a lot. In about moderation, this? you know? Consolidate. How much water does everyone else still have? Does anyone have any alternative storage containers? Uh, uh, just the two canteens. Yeah, no, I'm... I'm. Are you you have two? Yeah, he always carries extra stuff. Um, how are they both full, or...? Technically, in the uh, area that you two guys traveled in, there was a... There, there is a stream on the map that you guys would have refilled at, which I would have assumed. Okay, how far back was that? That was when you were at the lab, so that was one day of travel. Well, it says a uh, uh, one water skin's good for one day's worth of water consumption. Oh, that so you'd be one, one full, full, one empty. empty. Oh, that makes it easy. Synchronized. We just, we just fill one. Yeah. Uh, well, here, how about we, we fill one with the red juice, and let's try something. Uh, Charles Smoot will attempt to boil the water to see, and like, catch it, like in an evaporation dome. Okay. To see if he can boil off whatever the red stuff is and get regular water back. You are unable to do so. Oh, wow. It's really bad when basic biology and physics fails you. Uh, uh, I don't know what this stuff is, but I mean, it's good, but it's bad. Don't breathe it. What? We're what? here. Everything is red here. What do you mean? the uh, If this is in the oxygen, there's absolutely nothing we can do. You know, well, listen, I'm, I'm sure Pal, Pal will have some alternative for us. We just got to get there. Uh, and we will spend our new day uh, traveling down one and reconnoitering. Oh, did you want to yeah. reconnoiter this area first and map it? Oh, that's right. We had to do that because we ran out of points. Sure, 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 sure. Perception. Technically, you guys didn't even have all Natural 20. Absolutely. Um, I will even allow you to take the area to your east directly. And I will let you know this place is called the Crimson Well. You see that there is a waterfall as you're walking by this one area you're towards the outer edge of this region and you see that there is a red waterfall pouring into a small lagoon that is feeding into the river that you guys have been drawing your water from i called it the crimson well but you know i will allow your next mapping check to be for this area that you're in and also the crimson well itself well let's hope i don't botch that one and i don't 26 for charles smith's map yep 
All good, and we move down one, traveling, and reconnoitering, and mapping once more. Perception total of 22 for the reconnoiter, and a natural crit yet again for the mapping. Nice. I will allow you to take the upper right ridge, which is in the east, and the area that you're in as part of your map. Sweet, sweet. And then hopefully we only have a little bit more to go. We move down, hopefully, one last one. Then wants to try something slick. Okay. He'll go up to Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. Huh? Yeah. Why did the robot get brought in for questioning? I was hoping you are going to do the pickup one on her. That would have been so funny. Um, uh, why? For being a resistor. Ah. Uh, ah. You see, at the time, it. Smoot said it was funny, but I didn't think he was being genuine. Yeah, I don't, I don't get know what it, it means. Oh, wow, no. It, that, that's hilarious. You know, what? Like a, a, a resistor in like circuitry where like electricity flows through it, but it like dampens the voltage by lessening the ohms. Oh. So it's like resisting oh. the electricity uh, in a I'm, robot, just like uh, you would resist uh, the police. I'm not very technical, Mr. Smoot. Ah, honestly, bah, bah, bah. I call that thing off in the distance the Tower of Power. Oh gosh, are you talking about the transmission tower? You see. Pal uh, is a part-time bard. He does a comedy act, but all of his jokes are about androids, and I don't know about their culture. I was wondering if you had some insight about androids. Yeah, metal people. Yeah, no, they are—they're going to take over the world and destroy humanity. Uh, well, if they're that red-eyed ones, uh, I'd, I'd, I could believe that, especially if they weren't dilapidated. All but right. Pal's a good one. Yeah, that's what they all say. Uh, I'm now I'm more nervous than ever. Robots and jokes and everything. And we move into the next area. We perception and map. So, gentlemen. Gentle lady. And lady, who is me, who is narrating for Kelsey as well, I guess. Roll your perceptions. 16 on my perception, but a 25 on my map. Oh boy, 28. Okay. Big perception. Now, here's the deal, gentlemen. I don't like this. No We're going to change up this music. No deal. <gasps> Unless it's like happy doot doot noises. Unacceptable. Happy doot doot. Happy robot doot doots. That's all. I, it's either that or nothing. Well, I might be able to make something like that happen. As you enter into this new area, you begin to notice that there are these strange cut stones that seem to be placed about. And coming towards the back area... You see that there's this sort of like wall of the cavern that it, that kind of like meets here. You come to this area where there are several cut stone walls. There are three of them kind of situated, two in the back that are taller than the one that is directly in the front middle. This is a nice clearing that you walk into. You see there are birds kind of chirping around and most of them are reddish in color, though some of them are tinged back to like their regular tropical colors. But along, on the faces of these stones, there seems to be rows of plaques with faded inscriptions on them. And you see at the base of one of these stones, there seems to be an old robot that is covered in moss. It seems to be cleaning the area up. It does not look familiar, though. It's wearing a degraded straw hat and overalls, and you can see that almost all of its joints and limbs are kind of exposed. There's no skin to it. It's more of just the frame of a robot. However, as this robot is doing this, you hear off to the side a voice speaking out. Oh, I have a good one. I promise it will make you laugh this time. So, how many robots do you need to screw in a light bulb? Three. One to hold the light bulb, and two to spin the ladder. The other robot stands up, turns towards the direction of the voice, and you can see, as you all turn, that there is a very familiar android sitting on a bench under a cover. The other robot sort of shakes its head and walks away very slowly to another wall and begins cleaning that one. I understand. My jokes aren't very funny. I will continue to practice. Oh, 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 pal, that one was good. 
Uh, and if we if we see what we perceive as pal, Finn would just like run up and like hug him. Charles Smooth is just laughing at his joke. Well, you certainly did bring a smile to this face. Oh, the world is going to end. No, Kelsey, it's going to be fine. Don't worry. This is Pal. And Pal sees as you as you run up and grab him, he kind of pauses for a second. Oh, hello. And he pauses, and you can see that his eyes start doing that little rounding, like oh, that gosh. little symbol thing. Uh, my, my name got really messed up. We were trying to tell him the last time. <laughs> Let's see how he pronounces it now. I'm sorry. I can't seem to recognize you. Ah, is there something I can help you with? Uh, pa- pal, it, it's us. Oh, hello. I see that humans have returned to the Elsa shelter. I am so glad that you have come back. And you see as he kind of like tilts his head, there's like a little spark that kind of flashes out of his neck. Oh, 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 and you begin no. to notice that the clothing that he is wearing seems to be falling off and completely degraded. Ah, oh, look at this. We're gonna need to get you a new set or at least make some repairs. That would be wonderful. It has been over 2,000 years since I have seen a human or had repairs. Pal, uh, can you search your uh, memory banks for Charles Smoot? Processing. I'm sorry, but that name is not in my database. Oh, this isn't good. Well, we've met before. Uh, We've heard your jokes. Uh, We were helping um, Dr. Rebecca Rift. She said that she freed you of your restrictions so that you could help be a... uh, You could help Curtis. He's up north. I'm sorry, but I do not recognize that name. Curtis or Dr. Rift? I do not recognize that name. Oh, oh, oh no, but oh, I think, I think he might be damaged. Oh. How, what is the last thing you remember? Or the, the oldest thing you remember? You see as he stands there for a moment, he turns his head and he seems to stare off for a very long time. I'm sorry. It seems that my data has been corrupted. Is there any way to repair it? I don't know. Oh, you're at the manual, uh, Mr. Smoot. Uh, uh, wouldn't you know? Uh, Would you like me to add you to my database? Absolutely, pal. I'm Charles Smoot. Uh, that there, the, he's, he's Finnevere of Ear. Uh, that is Valen Gray. And this is Kelsey Kissinger. You see as his eyes seem to be processing and there's like a little flash. And then after a moment, he says, Hello. It is good to meet you all. I am so glad that we are together. And I think that is where we're going to end off this week's episode of The Gage Chronicles. Thanks for listening, Roundling, to this week's episode of The Gage Chronicles. We hope you'll continue to stick around and uh, follow along with this story by hitting that follow or subscribe button in whatever podcast listening platform that you're on. First of all, make sure you leave us a rating and a review wherever you are so that way other people can decide if they want to listen to us and it helps overall with discoverability. So we'd greatly appreciate if you could do that. We want to give a big thank you and shout out to Michael Gelfi with Michael Gelfi Studios, Yvonne Dutch, and Monument Studios for allowing us to use their music and ambiance in today's episode that we use to help immerse you in the story. So give them a follow, guys, because I'm sure they would appreciate it. That's all for me, Foundlings. We will see you next, next week in another episode of The Gage Chronicles. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.